All right, what's up, TFD fans? Uh, back with Coach Eric Nixick. Uh, Eric, if you were just talking briefly, you know you're missing the team, everything like that. And uh, other than that, besides training, how have you just been coping with everything just going on? How's your other team members doing too as well? Um, you know, for me personally, I, I kind of look at this as a little bit of a reprieve. You know, we're always on the go. We're always traveling as uh, as coaches and, and fighters and things of that sort. So um, I'm, I'm taking this time to, to kind of um, just be with the family more, you know, and, and invest in, in, in lost time, make up for lost time with the wife and the kids. And, and uh, you know, it's all about perspective. If you, if, you, if you look at it as a shit thing and, and you're bummed out, you're this and you're that, and that's the energy you're going to be putting out into the household. So um, I'm looking at it as, as a positive right now and, and doing the best I can. Obviously, I don't want this to continue on for, for a long, long period of time. But, um, mm -hmm. you know, at the end of the day, man, I, I'm, I'm very happy to be able to get, get back in there and be with my family. That's good, man. Um, I think a lot of people have utilized this time for a reset, as you said, and you know I've utilized it too. Just been here, um, and also just doing stuff like this as well. Just interacting everyone, see how they are, and um, aside from that, you know, how's the uh, training going? I see you and Francis still going at it. Um, what's the update with that? And then of course this nonsense happened with the whole Khabib Ferguson nonsense. Give me your insight on that. Well, we, we, we don't know anything. And as crazy as it may sound, like you would think myself or Francis or even, the, um, you know, his manager, Markel, we would have some sort of insight. And, and we really don't. All, all we know is that uh, that they're looking to put us on for April 18th and we're just going to keep working. What I told him, I was like, look, man, don't get frustrated. Think of it as just us getting our work in and we'd be training every day anyway. Um, although it's just me and him, we don't have anybody in the gym. He's going home to self quarantine. I go home to self quarantine. And, uh, when we come here, it's just, it's just me and him in the gym. So that's all we can do right now is, is keep our hard work going. And, and, uh, but Hey, we're still building these blocks and we're, we're getting better every day. And that's all I keep telling them. Let's just keep working. Yeah, man. Um, I, I hear that. I've been seeing like a lot of the fighters expressing their frustration just in general with all of this. Not even just on the training aspect, but just livelihood. And I know this past weekend, you guys were supposed to be up in Columbus throwing down. Uh, I was definitely looking forward for that fight and I was just bummed out. You know, we haven't had any this sporting event except Sunday. Thanks to Chill on him, but just in general. Um, at least you guys still have a chance to cope and just like, you know, to release the frustration, like you said, this is a chance to just keep working, keep going at it, but also just to, to go in the gym, just isolate, and then you just uh, releasing the frustration. But um, what is it like just training with Francis in general? You know, he's a big, intimidating, scary guy. For you, it just seems like, oh, it's just Francis. What's it like training with him? Um, yeah, I mean, he is. He, he's he's big and intimidating. You you nailed it. Um, but really, uh, he's he is he's a very tactical individual. Um, and I think for me, you know me very well. I think uh, it's fight IQ stuff for me. And then that's kind of what we're trying to add on right now is um, just being a, a all around smarter MMA fighter, cage cutoffs, control, precision, things of that sort. And obviously been working a lot in the back with uh, the wrestling and the ground game, just doing the stuff kind of, uh, you know, out of sight, just getting our work in because we know that this isn't just an eight week camp for uh, Jarzinho. You know, this is uh, building blocks for future fights and, and hopefully a title fights. So we want to use this time wisely. Uh, uh, as far as, as far as everything like that, um, compared to when you first met him to now, like what, how you see, has he improved from when he came, when he came in, he was, you know, forced knocking people out to this day. He's still knocking people out. You know what I'm saying? Right. I wouldn't choose to fight Francis. I'm just saying I met him in person. Right. When I was down in Vegas, but you know, cool guy, but uh, what do you think? Have you seen as far as improvements with him? Uh, probably more the fact that he's, um, he's found his group of individuals and coaches and friends and training partners, uh, that he connects with. Right. Um, I think probably when he first came out to Vegas, he really didn't know who to trust, who to, um, allow in that inner circle. And, and for me and him, man, like I was asked, uh, to help him out in the Cain Velasquez fight and I actually turned it down just because. You know, I didn't know Francis very well, and I like to be able to to have an organic relationship with my fighters. Um, it's not to me; it's just not about jumping in guys' corners. It's about the growth and and knowing each other. And so I I, I declined it. And then you know, the more and more we hung out, and the more and more we worked, and the more and more he was coming into the gym, um, 
we, we started sparking more of a friendship. And then I knew like, man, I, this guy, this guy's going to be good to work with. And, and I enjoy working with him as much as he enjoys working with me. And that's where you've seen, seeing the bond kind of uh, form between the two of us, you know? So, um, you know, that's, that's really it, man. It's just, it's just getting it in while we can and, and doing the best we can, but really uh, we get to build this, this relationship during that time. Yeah, that's that's good, man. Um, that's good to hear. Like, you know, when everybody sees like coaches and fighters, just like, okay, just see each other in training. But the fact that you guys are ex- having a friendship outside of, of fighting says a lot. And I feel fully believe that builds the chemistry. You know, um, it's just a reason why, you know, I created a platform like this because my friend and I correction, because you get to guys to express the behind the scenes people to understand or know you know, the sacrifices you guys go through, not just fighters, but also coaches too. You guys actually taking the time away from your families to go ahead and do what you love. And um, people don't really see that. So the fact that we get getting insight and what have you said that you learned about yourself in this quarantine, just as a person, but also like in the coaching aspect, what has like improved within yourself as well? Um, Probably just my mindset. You know, I I think, I think a, a lot positive now. I think about um, I think about kind of being more of obviously a leader with with this being my gym to run and and my show that if if I'm down and out and if I feel negative and if I feel this and that that's going to transcend amongst my teammates, uh, my coaches and my fighters that are all in the gym. So uh, just kind of having that positive outlook during this time and 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 persevering and pushing through, it it, put, it puts it out there for the rest of the team and they know that hey man. Uh, you know, coach, coach Eric's feeling, feeling positive And he knows that we're going to get through this. Then, then I feel like that's going to transcend. It's the same thing that would happen in a fight, man. If, if, as, if I got, you know, one of my fighters on the stool and I was down and out and, and negative and, you know, you, you're not going to want that in your corner. So I want to be able to show these guys that we're going to be fine and, and push through it. And I have to believe it. Yeah. I like that, man. Uh, darkest moments you find like the best time to just find the greatest strength. And that's good. Um, so this morning, of course, you saw the most cursed fight, the nonsense that's been transpiring. Uh, give us your insight on that. <laughs> I, you know what, man? It was funny because this morning I was actually, Francis and I were laughing about it, where, you know, it's like we've all been in those relationships where you're with this girl or you're with, you know, this partner, and you're like, I know this is not good for us. We might as well just break up, right? We're just wasting our time. Mm-hmm. It was like this whole thing was just, bound to be broken up like let's not <laughs> let's not get married let's not have kids let's not add a mortgage to this thing let's just break up now while we can so this is this this whole khabib and and tony thing just feels like it's a curse bro from the start <laughs> so, uh, yeah i wasn't surprised at all and you know what bro i'm good friends with gaichi i love gaichi and i love trevor whitman um stylistically if this fight does happen i think it's actually more uh more exciting fight than than the khabib and uh tony i think i think gaichi and tony are gonna are gonna be fireworks man Oh, yeah, I definitely agree on that. I was just like, I woke yeah. up, first thing I see, just trending. Because you saw rumors, like, at the day, at the day like, uh, Habib was back in Russia. I'm like, all right, that's a fluke. And then you see he was on Instagram Live. And then you saw the reports right. this morning. is like, oh, okay. I mean, we all had a feeling that this fight somehow, some way. And this right. time was because of injury. It's something that's completely out of their control. Right. <laughs> so, I mean... Right. Uh, and, you know, praise the praise the Dana, man. Like the dude is really trying to make this happen. Mm-hmm. You know, um, you, you, there's two sides of that coin, right? Like he's trying to make it happen. He's trying to put money in everybody's pocket. But he, at what cost? You know, at what, is it the reputation? What if he's putting people at risk? So you, you, you have both sides of that, man. Um, for me as a, as a coach and my livelihood, depending on paychecks that come from fights, if that's the only check that's coming in is we got to scrap, then you know me, bro. I'm on the first flight out. I'm down to scrap. So, <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll be there if we, if, if we have to. But, um, you know, it, it, it's tough. It's, it's a tough business. I know he wants to be the, uh, the big kid on the block and, and be the only, only sporting event going out right now. But, man, the more and more this is starting to happen, it's just like, yo, call it a wrap. Let's be done with this shit. And, and, and let's take, take a couple months off. Oh, yeah, for sure, man. Um... But from that, you know, you and I, we had developed a, a good connection, a good friendship. You know, you're very down to earth. You're hilarious. Your snaps, your Instagrams actually have me just cracking up. Um, uh, 
of course, with the children, learning them. You're teaching them cup pong, by the way. And who's the best one? Who won out that game, by the way? I just want to know who won in that game. <laughs> yeah, me. Well, I went 4 0 that night. So anybody that was on my team won. But my, my middle daughter, Avery, she's the, she's the athlete, man. She was she was knocking cups out left and right. So it was the first time she ever played. And then uh, her godfather called me and was like, yo, we got to FaceTime and play. So we, they're, they're in Scottsdale. We're FaceTiming each other with our families playing uh, playing Pong. So, man, it's it's been fun in the house. You know, we're, we're, we're all competitors. You know, my wife, she was a college tennis player, and she's probably a better athlete than me. Don't tell her I said that. But, uh, <laughs> you know, we, we, we battle back and forth all the time, and anything's, anything's a competition for us. You know, and uh, it's tough to lose in that house because you won't, you won't not hear the end of it. That's for sure. Yikes. Uh, and so bragging rights goes on in, uh, in the household. Oh, big time. Yeah. And, um, talk to me about your friendship with uh, Ryan. You know, you guys more have like a brotherhood, you know, just stuff. You guys hang out consistently. Of course, what I found hilarious was the whole thing with the pastry kiss. Um, that was, you know, that was <laughs> hilarious. That was just hilarious. Uh, to yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, we uh, I mean, you know, we uh, yeah, he's, he's definitely my best friend. Um, we complement each other very well and you know i don't think the business at extreme couture is the same if i was just running the show right i mean i was the gm i am the gm but but for a while it was just me and then uh now that ryan's been involved more in the past couple years it's really balanced the gym out in a way because uh we joke like we call we call uh bad cop you know good cop bad cop well i'm bad cop and ryan is no cop he's no cop at all yeah he doesn't he's not even the good cop you know, he's just, he just, he hates confrontation, but, um, you know, I'm the guy that's always coming at everything full head and, and I get mad and I get this and I get that. Now I have a guy that I can bounce ideas and thoughts of off of. And he, he really talks me off the ledge on a lot of things like where I just want to kill something. He's like, Hey, <laughs> calm down, blah, 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 you know, and, and just really talks me down. And then I'm like, okay, you're right. You know? And then, then on the other side, I'll, he'll calm me down. And then the, the, whatever thing keeps happening, I'm like, it's over. Fuck it. I'm, I'm, I'm hitting this thing full head on, you know? So <laughs> the relationship between me and him, man, is very genuine. Um, you know, like for me, like he, I got to stand up at his wedding. You know what I mean? Like that, that tells you a lot about, about our relationship. I got to stand next to him at his wedding. Um, you know, I actually introduced him and his wife. Like it was, it was, we, we go back, man, we're a family. Um, we've been through a lot together. Uh, I wouldn't want it any other way than having Ryan, Moreover, I've been in his corner numerous of times. So just, just, just with that, bro. Like, even talking about the guy gets me emotional, dude. I love the dude to death. He's my, he's my family, and um, you know, without having him in my life, I don't know where I'd be. To be honest with you. Uh, that that speaks testament. You know, having a, a friend that you consider like a family member it expresses a lot. You know, I, a lot of us I feel like don't have a lot of uh, people like that in our corner and blessing and blessed to have somebody like that. In yeah, our lives. You, know, you, you always want to have that guy. You can actually be vulnerable around, you know, you can say something and you know, they're not holding it against you and you can be open and honest and really get ideas from and thoughts from. And especially because, you know, him and I are both married and, and he doesn't have kids yet, but I do. And, you know, we're in the office a lot and we talk a lot and we're open and, and you need that man. Like, especially mm. in this sport and in and, and, and my position, a lot of times, for me, I deal with a lot of people's problems. People's problems come on my desk where sometimes I need to be able to vent too. And Ryan is that guy for me. Like I'm able to go and talk to him about things and get things off my chest and vice versa. So that's, I think a lot of our, our, our bond is, is we're very comfortable with one another. And, uh, you know, we, we help each other through these times. Uh, that's great, man. And I'm glad you guys have each other in those moments like that. Um, you know, before I let you go, I know you probably got stuff to do. Well, then again, I don't know. I mean, quarantine <laughs> going on. Who knows? Um, you know, it, when the Fr Francis and Jarzinho throw down, you know, the outcome that he wins, do you think this is going to solidify him to get the rematch against Stipe? Because by the looks of it, DC Stipe trilogy might not happen. And DC, you know, it's not going to wait a long round for long because he's ready. Wants, he wants to retire and just move on with the next right. step of his career. So. Depending on that happens, do you think like this will propel him? Because I know Curtis Blades is making a name as well, and Francis has two wins over him. Right. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, we talked about this before, and Francis has been pretty open about it. He doesn't have to fight Jarzinho. He could sit out and wait for the, for the winner of the D.C. Uh, Stipe fight, to be honest with you. I mean, he's the next in line. 
But, you know, the guy wants to fight. We haven't fought in over nine months. He's, he's ready, and, and he's a fighter. That's, that's, that's what it is. And I think it tells you a lot about his character is he doesn't want to sit back and wait for the title shot. He wants to perform, and he wants to get better. And these training camps is where you do it, right? Like, you put yourself in the fire. You build these bonds, you know, between myself and Coach Dewey and Markel. Like, I mean, this is you, – you're in the trenches. So the reality of it is, is, you know, it, it is all risk for him. And, and, but we want to go out there and showcase and get better. And if we, if we win this fight, uh, yeah, we're definitely in, next in line for the title shot. I don't think there's any question about that. And, and chances are it's going to be Stipe again. And, and that's what we're looking forward to. You know, we, we, um, I wasn't with Francis when he fought Stipe the first time. And we went back and looked at some of that tape. And there's some, some areas of improvement. And that's, that's what life's about, man. You get knocked down very – very rarely do you get the opportunity to go back and redeem yourself in something like this. So I know he's chomping at the bit to get a shot back at, T- at Stipe. Oh, man. Looking forward to his, this upcoming fight and hopefully it happens soon. And just life be great again because I know for a fact I'm you not know, working in the world MMA. Well, I, of course, I cover it, but just I know when anything gets back to normal, you guys are going to have a busy schedule, not just your gym, but a lot of coaches. Like For sure. I know it's going to be a wildfire. For sure. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna rap, rapid fire for sure. <laughs> All right, man. But thank you for your time. It's always a pleasure having you here conversing and everything like that. And um wish you the best during this time and keep on doing what you're doing, man. Very proud All of right, you. I'll see you soon, my man. Talk to you, brother. All right, take care. All right, later.